Good afternoon from day two at the D23 Expo. Today was a little bit more smooth entry heading in. We're gonna go into the show floor as soon as it opens at nine. I think we got about half an hour before heading in there. It's gonna be a good day. We're gonna have to look at so much more, so many more things. We originally thought like, we'll try to get into the Marvel Lucasfilm panel uh, and standby because we didn't have a reservation for it. But then we found out that this morning, all of the standby queue filled up at 5.40 in the morning. So definitely missed that one. We're gonna watch it on the screen in there or maybe just follow along on Twitter, watch a live stream of it, something along those lines. But other than that, we're gonna be exploring the show floor. Should be a fun day. Let's go inside. There's an entire another floor that we didn't see yesterday. So a lot of stuff to see. Already starting to see some Grace cosplay. We got Isabella from Encanto. I saw a She-Hulk down there, but like original comic book version of She-Hulk way off in the distance. I don't even know if you can see her. There should be like a pop of green that shows up every once in a while. Oh, here comes Jafar. Look at that. Looking all menacing, walking up just past Isabella. Got some Star Wars folks over here. I like it because I'm hanging out next to this like camera crew and they just keep pulling over people in costumes. And so I'm looking at everything that's happening. Just seeing all the people coming up in costume. There is a big crowd of people that they're getting ready to let in to this area to go into the actual convention floor over here. So we should see a pretty big rush in just a second. So I may have made it down into the basement to try to get into the Marvel Lucasfilms panel. We'll see what happens. All right, so we are in the studio showcase Lucasfilm Marvel Studio and 20th Century Studios panel. And they told us we're kind of far away from the stage, but they said when presenters are up on the stage, we can be filming and recording whatever we want to. But as soon as the lights go down and they start to show previews, we cannot record that. Was stuff on the spot, which was a lot of fun. So, um... well, you know what our writer John Kazan's like. He's very precious about his words. Oh yes, yes, yes. Got to be to the letter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't care though, did we? No, no, no. We took full advantage of it. It was great. <laughs> So I had uh, this was this was definitely a fun fun character something I, I was really happy to do. We were able to bring in the character that, as Dave had mentioned, he had been uh, thinking about doing in live action all the way back to when he was collaborating with George on on uh, Clone Wars and on on Rebels. Uh, so the idea of introducing her through the show was uh, a way for us to see if the audience wanted to see this character and to see who we could cast and, and that process and the response from that process when, when we brought Ro, uh, Rosario to the screen uh, made us feel confident and, and Kathy gave us the opportunity to uh, go ahead and make the series. And, and I get to be down there on the set with, with, uh, with Dave uh, right here in California and it's remarkable what they're able to accomplish and all the knowledge that Dave has brought from all the work he's done, all the lore he's developed over, over a decade and seeing that come to life in such vivid detail, with such attention to detail and authenticity, and then to see, of course, the lightsaber battles come to life. It's amazing action, and it's just been a, a treat for me, and it's also great to see Dave be able to come with everything that he's done in his transition, as Kathy said, from animation to live action, and just hitting the top of his game and his stride at the moment when this magnum opus of his is coming to the screen has been a remarkable thing to be a part of. I'm very grateful. Uh, so Skeleton Crew, yes. This is Skeleton Crew. Um, it's a show about a group of kids who get lost in the Star Wars galaxy. You know, like The Mandalorian and Ahsoka, this is set in the New Republic, but it's a completely new story that we're excited to tell you. And we've actually been filming it for a few weeks. Uh, like Dave, I was shooting yesterday. Um, and it's been on the same great. Lot, which is cool. Yeah, on the same lot. So <laughs> go cool. visit each other. It's nice. We have proof. Yeah. Right? And we, we brought a picture. We we're gonna show one <laughs> picture. <laughs> it's true. <Jude. laughs> and he's here. Oh, I got such a Star Wars now. reception yesterday, but today for Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness, I can't quite believe I'm a part of this uh, universe, this galaxy, this world. So thank you all so much having me. It's very, very good to be here and great to be here with you guys. And it's just our great privilege to take you guys to this galaxy far, far away. I know uh, from years of experience, the fans are always there for us. You've all been there for us over the years and thank you for your support and just enthusiasm. It really not, it doesn't just affect the people you see here, it affects the entire crew. They're so excited by uh, the reaction they get for the hard work that they put in night and day to 
bring you that galaxy. So thank you, fans. Let's that bring out the uh, the amazing cast of Mandalorian. <laughs> Grateful to John Favreau, and I'm grateful to Rick and Kathleen and Disney for having to allow me to be a part of this world. If you're here, you love Star Wars. If you're here, you love Star Wars. Why do you love it? You ever thought about it? Great storytelling, great action, great characters who are involved in something that is real for a purpose. It is the hero and the heroine's journey that matters. It is that you can see yourselves in the armorer. You can see yourselves in Mando. You can see yourselves in Moff Gideon. It is a wonderful place to be in this childlike wonder in this franchise. So I left off in this place of terror. I left off in this place of, of not knowing where Moff Gideon would go. I left off in a place of vulnerability. You hadn't seen Moff be vulnerable before. Wondering what is going to happen to me. This is a wonderful place to be, a wonderful springboard into season three. I'm grateful to be joining. I'm grateful to be here. And only you can supply yourself with the patience to find out what is <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for making these films such an incredible experience for all of us, giving the opportunity to us to to make these films for you. And I think, um, <laughs> I'm very proud to say <laughs> I'm very proud to say that this one is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of the reasons Indiana Jones movies are, are about mystery and adventure, but they're also about heart. And, uh, <laughs> really, really happy that we have, we have a really human story to tell, as well as a movie that will kick your ass. Since the first Iron Man, although his Marvel ties go all the way back to the first X-Men movie in 2000. He's an incredible filmmaker who keeps us all on the edge of our seats. Please welcome to the stage, Kevin Feige. To be honest with you, I've always been a little jealous of musical numbers. Why can't Marvel get... Our co-writer and director of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Ryan Coogler. <laughs> Ryan was hard at work in the cutting room, and he said, do I have to come today? I said, it would really be nice if you could. They really want to see you. Where do you go right after this, sir? Uh, back to the cutting room. Back to the cutting room, yes. Uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to be on stage with, with, with my uh, Disney family and Kevin and, and so thankful for the opportunity to work on these films and, and thankful for the opportunity to be here with you all today. Earlier this year we saw something at, uh, at Comic Con, hopefully you all saw the trailer, but uh, we, we couldn't come here and be with you all here at D23 without bringing you all something exclusive. Thank you for being here. Anything you want to tell us about returning to Wakanda? Oh, it was just an amazing experience. We Absolutely look forward to bringing it to you. This is like the calm before the amazing storm. <laughs> it was a great experience with the entire cast, tremendous crew. You know, it takes a lot of magic behind to make this come together. And of course, our, our, our leader, our spiritual leader, 
uh, Ryan and our heart with Chadwick, who was with us every step of the way. He paid, he showed us the way. He did it. And he had to, he had to meet his, his, uh, his level of excellence, and he did. This is a very big movie. This is a very different kind of a movie. It is a begins a direct line into Phase Five, right into the Kang Dynasty. Paul, yeah, tell tell us what it was like when you were named the sexiest man of the year. No, you don't have to do that. Oh, good. Uh, it's a live technical thing. No, it's uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, I I've met. Michael B. Jordan, and I know for a fact how false the title is that I would hold that. And you see that guy and think, no, yeah, that tracks, that makes sense. Certainly from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, I, the first couple movies are so near and dear to my heart as they are to Evangeline's. Um, and I was so excited to get ready to start this thing. This thing is uh, bananas. And while it's, it seems like a bit of an oxymoron that something so small, if we're the small heroes, will do something that's so huge. This is going to be unlike anything you've seen from us. And um, not to mention, uh, that guy, he's incredible. And uh, it throws this whole thing into such uh, new territory. A uh, Halloween special? Marvel Halloween special? You may know Michael as an amazing composer of such things as every Spider-Man film we've made. <laughs> such things as Up, Ratatouille, Jurassic World, Rogue One. What did I miss? The Batman? Yeah. The Batman! Uh, he is in a, The Incredibles. Who else? Shout him out! Inside Out. Yeah. Inside Out. He could be here for any number of those reasons. He could have a whole panel, a whole orchestra for any of those things. But he's here because he also is a very talented director. <laughs> you know, wait, wait, before we get into all this, I just want to ask you one thing. Just nerd to nerd. All right, nerd to nerd. How emotional was that Indiana Jones thing? I said I almost couldn't. I almost couldn't come out here. I almost couldn't come out here either. I was like crying back Amazing. there watching that. Amazing. I was. I. I. Sorry. I. Sorry. I digress. I had to do that because it's nerd to uh, nerd, nerd to nerds. <laughs> yes, to nerds. Yes, long live nerds. That is true. So Gael and I got to work on a little movie together called Coco, which you may know. And Laura is just brilliant in everything she does. And I saw her in the Nevers, and I was like. <laughs> Laura, definitely. So, how are you guys doing? Really good. Yes. Really good. Really, really excited to be here. Eh, muchísimas gracias también para toda la banda latina que está por aquí también. Claro, que sé, claro. I can't do that. And really happy to be here. Uh, uh, you know, wanting to say so many things, but uh, but still holding it because there's a lot of surprises, no? John, what can and can't you tell us? about Secret Invasion. Well, I can tell you that it's going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you that it's great to have Nick Fury. Um, yes, we clap for Nick Fury. Sam Jackson get to uh, really be the tour de force that he is and take on his own storyline and us really get to dig deep into who this character is. And a lot of cool stuff coming up, promise you, that we can't talk about, but I think it's incredibly exciting and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Uh, it's an amazing cast, uh, returning cast like a uh, uh, Maria Hill character is back. We've got Amelia Clark joining the MCU. We've got Olivia Coleman in this. Uh, ben Mendelsohn's back. Indeed. Involving Stark armor getting out into the wrong hands. And there's one man standing who can help us with that. And that is Jim Rhodes. And yeah. glad to be a part of this one too. Another uh, exciting one that uh, we're going to start shooting next year. Six parts. Again, a lot of stuff that can't spoil. But uh, Sea Secret Invasion, it sets up a lot of what's going to be happening in the next series. And I'm really excited about this as well. You can start to see how a lot of franchises and projects link up with one another. And this very much comes out of what, uh, where we are left in Secret Invasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Cheadle. Right now in the UK, uh, as we speak, but they wanted to say hi, so they got on a plane and came here. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here, to be back with Loki. Um, and also an enormous pleasure for me to be able to welcome 
key really three qualms of the cost. Yeah. Wait, uh, sorry, I'm so confused right now. Yeah. Is this not the Indiana Jones panel? <laughs> um, uh, sorry, Key, no, it's uh, the Loki panel. We've been shooting for 12 weeks. Um, we can't tell anyone what we've been shooting, but we definitely have. It's in the bank. Um, I also saw, from backstage, I saw the um, Quantumania footage, and I recognized uh, one of the faces in it. Um, yeah, me too. I thought I killed that dude. Well, I think maybe in a variant of that dude, potentially, that, that I know anyway. So I just wanted to say, Paul Evangeline, Good luck with that. Every single episode of WandaVision was directed by one man. His name was Matt Shackman. He's over there somewhere. And I just brought him to say hi because he is directing Fantastic Four. <laughs> Fantastic Four, as we said, coming to phase six. There he is. There's Matt. Now, why is Matt not on the stage? Because we have nothing else to say about it today. Oh. Other than it is coming soon. And there'll be another D23 Expo before then. So Matt, we'll be up here at the next one. All right, thank you. Thank you. Matt Chapman, everybody. Hawkeye. Her name was Maya Lopez. In the comics, she goes by the name Echo. And we are doing an amazing new series they just wrapped. Now you've just wrapped starring in your own show. How does it feel? Oh my gosh. What a journey this has been. This is only my second role I've ever had, and now I've become a lead. It's just so crazy to me. It's not that easy, but I'm so lucky to have amazing co-stars that were even able to help me through along the way of this giant journey I did. So thank you guys so much for all of your help. I couldn't have done anything without your guys' guidance. But really, this is such an amazing feeling to only be my second lead. It's great. You know, to bring Fisk and Maya back together again was just an absolute thrill. I saw Alekwa's capabilities when we did Hawkeye, but I really had no idea the extent of her talent. And we had some crazy scenes. And, uh, you know, you, to be with another actor that has the kind of talent that she does, where we're just one on one with each other, full on, it was just extraordinary. I think that. The new Daredevil. Aren't you supposed to talk about my show? Wait, your show. This is the first time I've stood with these two gentlemen together, so it's pretty amazing. What, what is it like being back? The two of you who've been doing this for many, many years and now joining the Marvel Studios family. I mean, it's, it's emotional. It's really, really emotional. It's a, what an odd feeling to have been, in some ways, been doing this for a while. And, uh, and yet, we're, we're starting again. Coming to the big screen in our upcoming film, Captain America, New World Order. Please welcome to the stage our director, Julia Sana. Now, Julia, we, we don't start filming until early next year, and you've just, digging into it, how's it feel? Never mind this incredible stage, but to be taking over Captain America. It feels incredible. I mean, look at this cast. It's an amazing group of people, and you and everyone at Marvel. This is going to be a wild ride, this movie. It's a great, great paranoid thriller, and uh, just getting to really be a part of seeing Sam take center stage and Anthony. I'm through the roof. I'm so excited. It's a movie now. How's it feeling? Uh, it's amazing, man. I'm, um, I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's, um, you know, it's, it's everything I expected it to be. Um, the, the script is amazing, the cast is amazing. My man D Nice coming back and roll with me. My man Shaggy Cole coming through. Now we're bringing Nasty Tim in here. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> the Thunderbolts are finally coming to the screen and they are a ragtag bunch and I want you to meet them. And there's somebody else who couldn't be here with us today but she wanted to say a quick hello. It is Florence Pugh here. I am so gutted that I'm not there in person to say hi, but I am unbelievably excited to be joining this cast. So please, from me, can you share a lot of love to my castmates? I do. I do. I do. I do. Bye for now. And I am uh, extremely excited to announce also joining the Thunderbolts, Sebastian Stan.
pleasure to be here. I love this, uh, I love this team. I love the Marvel Universe. And I love Red Guardian and my beloved Yelena. <laughs> Honestly, one of the best relationships in the MCU is the, uh, is the demented father-daughter relationship. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Hannah, returning to the MCU for the first time since Ant-Man the Wasp was a ghost. Thank you so much. <laughs> Coming back. Anything you want to tell us about what it feels like to be back here? Oh, it's good to be back. <laughs> Honestly, it's amazing. And yeah, thank you for having me back. And can't wait. Uh, you're great. Thank you so much. Wyatt, good seeing you again. Last time I saw you, you were beating people to death with a shield. You were perverting the very notion of what it means to be Captain America. That's right. Is there hope for U.S. agent, my friend? Uh, I don't know. It's up to you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good to be back. I'm excited. It's the most boring Avenger. Um, welcome, to, welcome to Disney. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be super exciting. You got a great team of people. It'll be really fun. And uh, the creative team's going to make something awesome we can all be proud of. So, Sebastian, on to you. Well, listen, you know, um, these are my kinds of people, you know. <laughs> they look like a good troubled bunch, and maybe I know a thing or two about that. And I'm just really glad to be back and, I guess, join a team of some sort. Well, I, I think it, lets, it tells you all you need to know about the Thunderbolts when, when Beloved Winter Soldier is the most stable among them. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, this starts shooting early next year. Thank you so much to the cast and to the director. The first time the three of them been together on stage, the first time any of them been to D23, and Amon, is this the first time you've been in front of 7,500 fans? Give or take, yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, Amon went to a pretend convention called Avenger Con in Miss Marvel, and now you come to a real one. It's not too bad. Yeah, I'm having trouble breathing today. It's great. Yeah. It, it's not pretend. She is a bigger fan uh, than any of you, and we didn't know this when we cast her, and we regretted it only slightly. But it, it's remarkable, Tiana. Joining us in WandaVision, and now you've already shot this incredible appearance. What's it like? It's been amazing. Uh, you know, Monica got a little bit of powers or something, so we're going to see how those pop off in the Marvels. Very exciting. <laughs> Bree, you're back. You brought more Marvels with you. Thank you for that. It's incredible. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> how is it? Your next movie? Uh, this one? Uh, I can't tell you about it, but it's incredible. I had such an amazing time with these beautiful women, inside and out. I learned so much, and it was really nice to have a team. I had a team. A team brought together by Nia. Nia, thank you for joining the MCU. Oh, okay. How's it been? Excuse me. Um, my favorite part, besides working with these amazing women, finally being part of a universe I've loved since I was a kid, is accosting you every time I see you and pitching you 17 movies. So thank you. That is true. For that. Thank you. I appreciate it. That is true. None of them are in production yet, but we'll see. I think I'll get there. I'll get there. Yep. Time for one more thing. Yes. Okay. We're so proud to have 20th Century Studios as part of the Disney family led by Steve Asbell. Through 20th, we're excited to bring to the big screen the continuation of the story that took the world by storm when it debuted in 2009. Of course, I'm talking about Avatar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Of course, I thought I'd start off by sort of just asking a couple questions of our cast. So I'm gonna, Steve, I'm going to start with you. Uh, your, your character died in the first film. How did you feel when you found out that you were coming back to be a part of the sequels? Well, you, you know, you can't keep a good Marine down, I guess. So, uh, yeah, he just regrouped in hell. I was... Uh, <laughs> I was shocked, I was thrilled, I was delighted, I was absolutely amazed. And uh, I guess standing here is the first time I actually believe it happened. Sam and Zoe, your characters in these sequels have become parents. And both of you in real life, since we made the first movie, have become parents. So how, did, how does it feel now to play parents on just, the screen? Just to clarify, not we didn't have kids with each other. We did not, we did not. All right, we just finished the Marvel and Lucas film panel. Now we're all heading back out into the show floor. So we just got out of the Marvel and Lucas films. By the way, Kevin's over here walking by. There he is. 
So we just got out of the Marvel and Lucasfilms panel and it was wild. There was so much stuff that happened. So many things were announced. Uh, some things that I'm excited for, Wakanda Forever, Ironheart, uh, Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, the by, Werewolf by Night sounds amazing. Like a, a, a Halloween special in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sounds so cool and so fun. I can't wait to see it. It's coming out very soon. Andor, I kind of want to see Andor, Indiana Jones. There's so many things that are like, uh, 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 it was hard to keep track of what was all happening in that moment. I gotta sit down. We're gonna get some lunch right now and I gotta sit down and go through everything that was announced and kind of talk a little bit more about it. I don't know. Very exciting, very exciting. I gotta get some food in me though right now. Oh, oh, she has a dress made out of Disney Parks bags. Amazing. So we've got some photo meetups over here. Looks like we've got all the Thors out here and the Lokis. We've got some Hawkeyes, we got some raccoons, we got some Doctor Stranges, we've got some Americas, we've got some Kate Bishops. This is like all of the Marvel characters out and about. Wow. Get some Star Lords. A lot of different cosplays out here. Oh, there's an alligator low key right there. this Ariel and her Prince Eric. He's dressed up as the artist formerly known as Prince, but also Prince Eric. We have an artist out here. This is RC Art. And he is doing this gigantic mural out front. Came out to get some sort of food and we thought maybe the lines would be a little bit shorter way out here. I don't think they are. I think they're going to be just as long and we're going to be waiting for food no matter what. So, she's getting lunch somewhere. All right, this lunch looks pretty darn good. We went to this Gray's place. I got the umami burger. Kind of hard to see. I don't have very much room here. Let me see if I can kind of open it up. It's got uh, garlic mayonnaise, black truffle, ketchup, some uh, Parmesan cheese, some mushrooms, some Swiss cheese, all on this hamburger. And these fries are really delicious. Look at this Cruella cosplay. Amazing. While I was eating lunch, I was just trying to recap in my brain everything that we learned at this panel. And I don't think that I can. There was just so much that happened. I feel like I'd have to sit down with a pen and paper and like go through it and talk about it. I don't know. It's, this is what's wild about coming to Expo is like you get so much information at these panels that like you can't you can't recap it you have to you have to like think about it later and i'm just like rambling now but one thing that happened was we, we heard a live band came on stage kevin feige came out and he's like i want to have there be a big musical number and so he had people perform rogers the musical live on stage with a live band and it was phenomenal like i was never really that into the rogers the musical thing in the hawkeye but I liked it seeing it live. It was very powerful and like the, everybody did such a good job. The singing was fantastic. The dancing was so good. And I like it honestly surprised me. And I think that I'm most excited for Indiana Jones and all of the Marvel stuff. There wasn't anything Marvel that was announced that I was like, I don't know. I'm not really excited to see that. Everything I was excited for. They announced Daredevil, which was very exciting. Vincent D'Onofrio came out and he talked about Daredevil because he is going to be an Echo, and Echo is neat. The one thing that I thought was strange is because Echo deals with um, people with hearing disabilities, they did it with, uh, they, they had American Sign Language people like signing on stage and talking to the main actress or the main actor who is deaf herself, so she uses American Sign Language, and then they put subtitles on the trailer, which makes sense, but why didn't they put subtitles on every trailer? Right? You'd think that they would, but they didn't. Um, but I don't know. I was very excited for Echo. I was very excited for everything. I was excited to see Vincent D'Onofrio. I was excited to see uh, Daredevil come out and then talk about Daredevil. There's just so much stuff. Like I said, I'm more excited for all the Marvel stuff. All right, let's go back inside, have a look around a little bit more. And then at three, like in a half an hour, we're going to come back out and have a look at some more cosplay because there's a Star Wars cosplay meetup. So much stuff happening. So we came back outside because all of the Star Wars cosplayers 
are meeting together oh, yeah. to take a photo. Like this Freddie Mercury Han Solo up there. That's my birthday. One, two, three. Did you want to come with me? Yeah. Not, not just people. Not just people. All right, and can we get everyone real quick just to wave to the cameras to get an action shot? But we are going to have to still do one. I was doing just the Jedi. Would everyone mind taking about five steps over the door? Right, there we go, directions are hard. Oh my god, oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. Right, that's cool. This is like, a, like an Elvis stormtrooper. Found what? What's he doing going up there with the, with the villains? Is Panic a bad guy? Oh, that's cool. Do, do you guys get it? Like Boba T, Boba Fett? It's a fantastic idea. I love it. Thank you so much. Holy macaroni. That is an intense dress right there. Wow. So we are going upstairs. We haven't actually been upstairs at all this expo. And there's more exhibits up here. So it was not, there are no exhibits up here. This is just where there are stages up here and shops. And then we're gonna go up one more level because there's another set of shops up there. Check it out, she's Kermit. I love it. It's a fantastic costume. Thank you so much. Oh, so she's like a Rapunzel mermaid. Brilliant. John Landau standing right in front of, there's like an avatar water, like a, an avatar display here that he's just standing right in front of looking at. So just outside of where Walt's Plane is, there's an Amazon booth. So the Walt's Plane exhibit is sponsored by Amazon and they have some of the stuff for sale that you can get on Amazon. But also, I didn't know that they had Walt's Plane ears. Look at those. Those are cool. But I feel like everything else we saw but it looks really good. Like, I, I want some of the shirts for sure. They have these full-size posters. I just want this in a shirt, but I think I can order it on Amazon, so that's what I'm probably gonna do. So the stuff on this tower is exclusive to D23. You can get it online, but some of the stuff you have to actually be here to physically scan the QR code to find it online. But this is the line to pick it up right now to just buy it. it stretches all the way around the corner down there. Came by Rock'em Socks, the world's largest sock store, Shout out to an Orlando-based company. They did sell out of these show-exclusive D23 socks, but they have all these other ones, like a Zero to Hero sock with, with Hercules on it. Oh man, I gotta wear these Kermit the Frog socks, right? Yeah. So if you're interested in shopping any Disney socks, just scan the QR code right now. They have a whole bunch of different ones. Look at this. We got Woody and Buzz and the Green Aliens and just the Pixar balls. Oh yeah, look, some goofy movie stuff. That Max, those Max socks are awesome. Oh, we're gonna have to start collecting milk snobs again now that we're pregnant again. Yeah, so these are like, you can use them as, as uh, like covers like this. You can use them as, as nursing covers, blankets and the such. They're fantastic. They're stretchy and heavy and easy to use. I love them. We have this one right here. Good stuff. It's like this gigantic 3D art. Where do I have to stand to see it in the right perspective? I think it's way back here. It looks somewhat normal back here. Well, because she's following, she's falling down. Okay, she's going down the rabbit hole. Over here at Iron Studios, this is where they make these hyper-realistic figurines. Look at this. Look at Wanda right here. Look at all intense. Pretty awesome. Darkwing Duck walking through. There's a gigantic beast back here. Look at everybody. Wow. Multiple beasts. Everybody's just trying to cool themselves off as much as possible. Check out Doc Ock right here. 
It looks awesome. We're gonna step into a, an exhibit called Step in Time, 100 Years of the Disney Archives. Right, so we are stepping into the archives exhibit that is celebrating 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. First thing up is the Steamboat Willie photo op, and it kind of goes through all the different films and things that happened along the Disney timeline. So in 1923, this is where we start with the Disney Brothers Studio, and Alice's Day at Sea, and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, and then we continue up in the 1930s, 1940s, and so on and so on. And there's a Steamboat Willie photo op here that people are going up into and taking a photo. This is from Steamboat Willie from 1928. He like wasn't sure that he could move it. And then they have from the 30s, they have some Mickey Mouse toys. I like this little piano. Look at this little Mickey Mouse tie. How cool is that? I wish somebody would remake that. It's cool looking. At least I think. What is he dressed as? Little wooden figurines with jointed, uh, with joints. Huh. Mickey and Minnie hand car from the Lionel Corp. The Lionel trains. What is this thing? This is a tie rack. Okay. I feel like I've seen one of these coin purses before. Oh, a photo album? A noise maker? These are neat. Look at this little tiny oven. An electric toy oven. I'm sure it caused no fires at all. And then we get into the Snow White era. And this was the movie that premiered at Carthay Circle in 1937. And we have some Snow White merch. Oh, Snow White perfume. Oh, Snow White chewing gum. A bubble bath bottle. That's in remarkably great shape. Wow. What is this? It's like a radio down here? <laughs> a police pass for Carthay Circle. Oh, and this was the pamphlet for the showing of Snow White at Carthay Circle. I don't even know if I can show that off because it's like reflective. Oh, a commemorative program. That's what it's called. I think that these plywood cutouts may have been on display at Carthay Circle. They've seen better days. And there's a few other cardboard cutouts or, uh, not cardboard cutouts, plywood cutouts up here of more characters. Oh, this Snow White dress was worn by Rachel Weiss 70 years after the film's original release as part of the Disney Dream portrait series by photographer Annie Leibovitz. And then 1955, we get into the opening of Disneyland and they've got some posters that were originally at Disneyland. It doesn't say on the board when they were at Disneyland, but they are talking about the opening of it in 1955, so maybe they were out in front of Disneyland in 1955. They have the words that are on the plaque over top of the tunnel that it leads into Disneyland. And there are Walt's notes on it saying, I want to change this. I want to change this wording. I want it to be a little bit different. So now it reads, here you leave today and visit the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. The very first ticket purchased by Roy O. Disney, July 18th, 1955 for one dollar. The very first name tag. It's Walt's name tag or Walt's employee badge. Various other commemorative things, a parking pass from opening day. What is this down here? Oh, this is Walt drawing the original concept for the admission coupon book. And there's the final product. Okay, if I'm reading this sign right, we're in 1964 talking about Mary Poppins and they give the description of how they actually made Mary Poppins and some of the studio tricks and the, like, the camera tricks that they used. And I believe that these were actually featured in the film. These carousel horses were featured in the film. And this was the dress that was worn by Julie Andrews in the film. And it's wild because it's not behind anything. They're just here. Like they're telling me that please don't touch, but like somebody could. And like, look at this, this is all hand painted. This one looks like it's from 1964. That one's in fantastic shape. But like, look at the paint cracking and falling off of this one. And they're made out of wood, so I bet you they weigh a ton. Wow. So now we are into Walt Disney World 1971, and we've got some props from the Haunted Mansion, which is an opening day attraction at Walt Disney World. But 
they say that they have uh, things that used to be in the Haunted Mansion, and then they even have the Bride, which left the Haunted Mansion in 2007. So, you know, I'm sure that some of these things were just kind of like laying around up in the attic. Various spooky vibe type things. This was one of the paintings that you would go past and has now been replaced with a photo op. You can see the eyes are following you as you pass in front of it. It's a pretty neat effect. Does it do it up and down too? Pretty neat. Oh yeah, there's some creaks. Is this, is this MP3 player back here part of the Haunted Mansion? This is like an old Edison Victaphone or Vic, like a Victrola. It's so neat because like this stuff can just look completely dirty. And I think that they probably repainted this. And there she is, there's the bride with her beating heart. Yeah, she used to be in the attic. What does she have in her hand? Yeah. She's got roses in her hand. We moved to 1982 and they're talking about Tron. And then we've got some, some video games here. But the biggest thing is this Flynn's Arcade neon sign. This is from the movie. That's the way that it is it kind of I was led to believe based on the, the wording of the sign up front. And then we've got a helmet worn by David Warner in Tron. Wow. There's an identity disc here used by gaming programs in the grid. And then a helmet worn by Jeff Bridges. It's just so interesting because it's like just foam and it looks like black tape, maybe like electrical tape that they used to make this. Some of them is, just looks like stickers. It's just it, after being here and seeing that there are cosplayers here that made stuff that looks better than this, it's wild that this is what they had in movies. Then we've made it into 1990 and we've got some Dick Tracy props, some clothes worn by the characters on Dick Tracy. Look at this. I seem to remember this jacket being a much brighter yellow and his hat being yellow too. It seems to be kind of like tan or brown. Interesting. Maybe it's just kind of faded from the years. So in 2003, now we're into the Disney Channel era and we've got all kinds of different costumes from the Disney Channel uh, people, like the stars of the Disney Channel shows. And they have a TV over here that you can like do the wand and make the Mickey Mouse ears. Just like that. So let's see what we've got. We've got Hannah Montana, worn by Miley Cyrus. Uh, I feel like people would wear these these jeans these days. We got London Tipton from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Oh, these are wild, what is this? Harper Finkel from The Wizards of Waverly Place. Alex Rousseau from The Wizards of Waverly Place. And then they have the actual stick that the Disney talent used to make the iconic mouse ears on the Disney Channel promo shots. Still in use today is on loan to the Walt Disney Archives courtesy of the Disney Channel. Countless stars have yielded it, including Raven Simone, Dove Cameron, and Brenda Song. Wow. So in 2012, Walt Disney Company completed its acquisition of Lucasfilm, and they ended up with the Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchises. And starting in 2000, 2021, the Walt Disney Archives started welcoming Star Wars pieces. So these are all screen used props from The Force Awakens in 2015. Like this banquette, I would call it, from, <laughs> from the Millennium Falcon. We've got a BB-8, we've got an R2-D2, we've got a C-3PO, and we've got that guy. This over here is D-O. Interesting to see this C-3PO costume. Looks well worn. Because by this point, C-3PO was, was well-worn. 
in The Force Awakens. He'd been around for a while. Oh, I guess Disney is going to have a traveling exhibit that's going to be making its way around different museums. Interesting. With Walt Disney Archives. That's going to be really interesting. It's going to be called Disney 100 The Exhibition. Look for it in a town near you. In early of 2023. Check it out. We've got Spider-Man and Mysterio. Looking fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Came back into the Parks and Experiences booth because I want to get back and try to play Uncharted Adventure. Disney's Uncharted Adventure is the new interactive game that's on The Wish. And it's way back in the back. And we're back here at the Wish display where they have Disney's Uncharted Adventures. I'm gonna ask them if there's a way that I can play it. We're gonna use exactly what sailors used to navigate the sea and have for many years. And that is the constellations. And so as we're looking for the constellation we want to choose to go find the Wishing Star's magic, we're gonna see Nemo, who is... I think he's gonna make me turn around all the way here. Oh, no. There he is. <laughs> Turned at an angle. So oh, yeah. like finding Nemo. I'll be the leader of this quest, so I'll start a quest and then I'll join us in on a team here. So this piece of the Wishing Star's magic is falling into Sydney and so we can see it's fallen into the ocean, so that's the first place we're going to go looking for it. Okay. Now this takes place all over the ship, so it's going to tell us exactly where it wants us to go and show us a photo of it. So when we tap Let's Go, it'll give us some context on the deck plans to show us that this is in the Grand Hall. We'll tap the Wishing Star icon to move forward, and once we have found this sign that we're supposed to be at, which luckily for us is right here. We did it. Tap, I've arrived. All right, and I'll this off. So what we'll now have one of you do is align your spyglass to the Wishing Star. Now you want to fill the screen with it, so you may have to get a little bit close. Okay. Awesome. So now we've transformed our digital piece of artwork here into a magical spyglass and a magical portal that's going to take us to the world of Finding Nemo and to Sydney. We're going to get some help and instructions from a familiar friend. And because we're in Sydney, who else would it be besides Nemo? Oh, look. There he is. Hi, I'm Nemo. Hi, Nemo. I bet you're here because you saw the really bright light, huh? I think it's just beyond the reef. Don't tell my dad, but my friends and I are going to go see. Want to come with us? Sure. We just need oh. to find our way through the currents. They can be tricky. I've done it before. Come on, follow me! Tilt your device left and right oh, to move okay. from side now to remember, side. Remember, each of you has a Disney me, so you'll be controlling the character that's about to Tilt your device Disney. back and forth. Oh, okay. Up and down. So I'm Dory, because yes, I'm the so green guy. should be Dory, and... Yep, there you go. I am notoriously terrible at doing this with one foot, two phones, and two hands. Ooh! Uh -uh. Oh my goodness, the current. Yeah, and just like in the ocean, the currents can help you or they can harm you. So you'll want to okay. pay close attention to the direction the currents are going and make sure they're taking you in the direction that you want to go. Look at me go. We but didn't we do it. We out to the open ocean. So we did it. I, I have faith in this. I know we can do it. We made it. I guess we got a little turned around, huh? But we still had a pretty cool adventure. You don't see that bright light here. It must have got carried off by the EAC. Well, uh, I better get back before my dad misses me. It was great hanging out with you. Goodbye! Thanks, Nemo. So at the end, of course, we've all got our group score as well as our individual scores. And then on your device, what you'll see is each of your Disney Me has also accumulated some experience points. Oh, okay. Those experience points will help you level up as you play the game. And at the end of um, each task, you'll be awarded a new item for your Disney Me. Oh. Um, so in this example, for playing this task, we would have earned a sea anemone hat for our Disney Me. Okay. So as you do that, um, each task will give you more, and each level of experience you gain will also give you an item for your Disney Me. That's cool. So it ties it into the broader experience and gives you a little memento of the time you spent playing. Uh, now this can take place all over the ship, so obviously some things take place on a digital screen, other things take place in augmented reality, and then there's even a third kind of task that can take place on things that only live on the ship that you may have walked by yesterday and had no idea did anything, and all of a sudden today you're controlling it and bringing some extra magic to life. That's cool. I wanted to actually come back in to have a look at Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Look at Tiana's up there again, right there. And uh, kind of read through some of these and it's kind of explaining like back there, T Tiana's father taught her how to cook and then she opens up Tiana's palace and then she expands Tiana's palace into a business empire called Tiana's Foods. And we can see on the water tower back there, it says Tiana's Foods. And then we go around the other side here to learn a little bit more. So Tiana throws a party for all of New Orleans 
and it's to celebrate carnival season that she discovers her celebration is missing a key ingredient and she requests the help of guests to find it. And it says that you will see some familiar faces and then you might meet some new friends like this otter right here. Pretty neat. And this is, we found out, is Disneyland's Splash Mountain. Oh, and there's the sign for it right there, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Interesting, because it's about five o'clock and I feel like there's a panel happening somewhere, but like there's not a lot of people out on the floor right now, for sure. I came outside and I just missed it. All these people that were dressed as Small World characters were out here singing Small World and moving like they were the dolls from the Small World. All right, it's about 5.15 in the evening. The expo actually goes on until seven, but I think I'm just gonna call it a night right now. It's been a long day. We actually were able to get into the Marvel and Lucasfilm panel, which was amazing. Got to see a lot of really cool things that blew my mind. A lot of really neat announcements, a lot of really cool trailers that we couldn't show you guys, but we, there was a lot of famous people in there too, a lot of actors and actresses. It was really neat. And then just going out on the show floor and just like exploring a little bit more was a lot of fun. I think today we spent a lot of time looking at cosplays and the ones that are here today, amazing. And the thing that's neat about this expo is like three days long. So you might see a different cosplay every day. You might see maybe the people change their cosplays. You never know. And like the, the different ones that like combine with other ones and like, you know what I mean? Like, like two combined ideas. They're just so neat and innovative and like imaginative. So all in all, a fantastic day at D23 Expo. We're back tomorrow. We have a reservation for parks and resorts and parks and experience panel. So hopefully we'll get a lot of new information about what's coming to the parks and what like new announcements. An exciting day. I'm very excited for tomorrow morning. And then it's the last day and we'll just be exploring the expo for the rest of the evening. So, but, but all in all, a fantastic day. We really enjoyed ourselves here at the D23 Expo. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. My name is CK. My name is Lee. And, and now, now it's time, time to pay, pay the, the price. price.